Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Today I'm going to be doing something very exciting. I'm going to be setting up my 2020 bullet journal and I have been looking forward to doing this for the past couple months now, but I've been in the process of graduating and moving and I am finally moved into my new apartment and settled. So I thought this would be the perfect time to sit down and film this video. So I am using a new bullet journal this year which is very very crazy because I've used the Loisterm for the past three years but I got the Archer and Olive dot grid notebook in this B pattern with this uh, vintage blue color and it's so pretty I love it so much and I can't wait to try it out and kind of put it to the test so many of you guys suggested this bullet journal to me so I had to try it out um, but I think it's so cute and the little embellishments on it are so so adorable. I ended up getting the dot grid notebook with the 192 dot grid pages, um, which is the larger one. I know that there's like a, the regular one is I think 160, but I was pretty worried about uh, running out of pages um, for the whole year and I really didn't want to use two bullet journals. So I just kind of went with the one that had more pages. But yeah, already I really love it. Um, the pages are like a bright white, whereas the Loistrum has more yellowy pages. So I think this is gonna go a lot better with all the prints that I do um, and that I paste into my journal. Uh, and the pages are super thick. Um, I'm going to test out a couple different things. I'm first gonna test out these Copic markers. And I already know these are gonna bleed through, but I wanna see if they are going to blend as well as they do on marker paper because if you use these on normal copy paper or on the Loistrum pages, they are super streaky because of how dry and granulated the um, paper is on those kind of things. And that kind of paper can definitely ruin these kind of pens because it will fray the tips of the markers, which has happened on a lot of markers that I own actually from that paper. So I was honestly so happy to learn that these pages are super smooth and the Copic markers blend so well on this kind of paper. So I'm just really excited to start being able to use these kind of markers in my journals. But yeah, I'm just using the Skin Tones Copic sketch set and I'm just kind of doing this abstract looking um, doodle page for my first page of my 2020 bullet journal. And I'm leaving a little bit of white space in the middle so I can write 2020 on it. And I just love these colors right now. I've been obsessed with these peach and ochre tones uh, in the past couple months. And those of you that have been following me for a while know that I went through a huge like indigo blue and Payne's gray phase where pretty much every painting that I did and every spread that I did were using those colors. So I'm kind of glad that I got away from that. And now these are kind of like my new colors for 2020. But this is how the page turned out before I stamp on the letters which I'm going to be using my little typewriter stamps to do these are one of my favorite things that I own for bullet journaling I think I have been in love with these this year ever since I got them and I will definitely link these in the description. I have the small and medium ones. And I think my next purchase is going to be uh, the number ones that they have because I'm so bad at writing numbers for some reason. It always looks so uneven and bad. So I really need to get those number stamps for like calendars and stuff. But um, I'm just using my VersaFine ink pad and I'm going to stamp 2020 on the middle of this page. And to finish it off, I'm going to doodle a bunch of little stars because I was kind of not liking the white space. Um, and then the spread is done. So as I expected, the uh, Copics did bleed through a little bit, but they didn't bleed through to the other side, which is really nice because um, they're very, very inky. 
and the fine liner didn't bleed through or ghost at all which is definitely something that would happen in the Loistrum so I'm actually very impressed already um, but now I just got out my iPad Pro and I'm going to use this calendar that I've already set up I kind of just typed out these little calendars in Procreate uh, a while back for the calendars that I've created in the past and I'm going to use that as my template for the new calendar that I'm going to paint. And I will actually put this as a printable in my shop because I know a lot of you last year had asked about it and um, wanted to kind of create your own calendar. So I will have that in my shop as a printable. And for paper, I am using Epson's Premium Matte Presentation Paper. And this is the paper that I use for all of my art prints in my shop. I've been using it for years now and um, it just is a very high quality matte presentation paper. So I use this for everything. And I've noticed that this is actually a not bad paper to paint on. Um, it's obviously not going to be as nice as watercolor paper by far since watercolors tend to dry more quickly on them and don't kind of like spread out like normal watercolor paper would allow you to do but um, it's definitely doable and I've been using it to do this for the past couple years for this calendar print that I do so I am going to use my little Decadent Pies watercolor palette and my little Allison Freitheim Ceramics uh, water dish and a very fine watercolor brush. I usually use my Winsor & Newton fine point watercolor brush, but I can't find it anywhere. Since I moved into a new apartment, I don't really know where everything is yet, so I'm just kind of using this other brush for now, but I will link my favorite one in the description box because that one's like my go-to all-time favorite uh, fine point brush. But this one's doing okay for today. It's definitely harder to letter with, so I'm kind of making some mistakes, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going in with the different colors in this palette. So I'm using like the ochre one and the orange one and the kind of like deep brownish red one. And I'm alternating um, colors and kind of sometimes adding more water to them or less water to them depending on how dark or light I want the letters to be. And I just kind of run them together to create this like ombre-ish effect with the letters. And I really like how they turned out and I'm going to use the same colors to draw these little stars and dots all over. And I'm just alternating colors again um, and kind of trying to use the same color scheme as the lettering that I did. This is kind of similar to the calendar that I did last year, but I did it all in blue and I did um, I did the stars a little bit different, but this time I wanted to kind of add some squigglies and different patterns to it. So yeah, I just think it turned out really cute. And um, I'm now gonna take my handy jelly roll. I know you guys probably know this tool by now because I've used it so much, um, but I go through these like crazy. I just think it's so cute to add just a cute little like gold embellishment to the prints that I do. So um, I'm gonna do that. And if you actually buy a print of this in my shop, I will have an option to put these little gold embellishments on it, but I just love the way it looks. So before I paste this one into my journal, I'm going to take a, another piece of paper and I'm going to do another watercolor painting to go alongside it. And this time I'm actually using watercolor paper and I'm using the Canson watercolor paper brand. And then I'm just taking my small ruler and I'm going to uh, draw these borders on the outside. Usually I will use um, washi tape to do my borders since it's easier to just kind of peel off and then I don't have to worry about staying inside the lines. But I literally ran out of all of my washi tape. I'm not sure how that happened, but I usually have like at least 10 washi tapes at a time and they're all gone. So we're just doing it the old school way and we're just staying inside the lines. And I'm just using the same colors that I used on my calendar 
and I'm gonna let them dry and then I'm gonna do a little doodle on top. So I'm taking my white jelly roll and I'm gonna draw a little lavender plant and I ended up not liking how it looked so I went over it with a black uh, micron pen but I ended up really liking the white on the inside of the black line, so I ended up using that and going into all of the um, lavender plants and adding that white little um, accent color to it. And then I just did some little stars around it, of course, and this is actually a design that I use for the custom journals that I sell in my shop, but the other day I was doing one with this pattern and I was like, oh, I should turn this into like a art print. So that was kind of like what spawned this idea for me. And I felt like it needed a little bit more. So I went into Procreate and added some digital like white accents to the print. And these are the final uh, prints that I'm gonna paste in my journal. I think they go so well next to each other and I'm just super excited to see them side by side. And this will also be the perfect way to cover all the bleed marks in my journal. If you ever have like bleed through or something from a page, I would just put like an art print or something on it. But yeah, to paste it in my journal, I'm using the Tombow mono adhesive tape. This is my trusty tape that I've used for years. And yeah, that is pretty much the final spread after I add these few little gold touches to the top. Alright, moving on to the next page, I'm going to do something similar to what I did in my 2019 bullet journal setup, and I'm going to do this um, monthly important date section for all of the months in the year, so I'm going to have them on two different spreads. Um, so this one will be January through June, and the next one will be um, July through December. And the main point of these spreads is to one kind of have a place where I can like look at what's going to happen uh, later on in the year if there's like a certain date like my sister is getting married in April or um, different birthdays or different things like that that I want to remember and it's also a nice way to keep all of your memories in one place from the whole year. So at the end of the year, usually I'll kind of like go back and flip through my pages and then jot down all of the important dates that happen throughout the year on these pages just to kind of have like a, it's almost like a table of contents for my life, I guess. But um, yeah, I just really like spending time on these pages because I know I'm going to flip back to them like in the future. And um, for this one, I'm going to do a little rosy theme. And to do them, I'm just basically doing like a bunch of splotches with my markers. They definitely look pretty ugly in the beginning. They don't look like anything. But then I go back in with my G2 pen and I do the little doodles of the rose petals and I'm adding the little um, leaves to them. And once I add that, I think it looks so cute, especially like all together on one page. To fill in the little blank spaces, I'm just going in with my doodle stars again. And then this is pretty much the end of this page. So for the next pages, for my July through December spread, I'm going to take my other Copic sketch set, um, and these ones are the grays uh, colors, so it's just a bunch of different like shades of gray, and I'm going to do a starry theme on this one. So I'm just going in with my lightest color first, and I'm just doing a bunch of stars and moons and dots, and I'm going to fill up the page and then I'm going to outline them like I did with the roses with my G2 um, black pen. And even though these patterns are so simple, doing this like over and over again is so tedious to me and I hate tedious tasks. So that's why a lot of the time I don't doodle anymore. I do more like 
like paintings or drawings and things like that instead of doodles because I often get so impatient after a while doing like the same doodle over and over again, but that's okay. Anyways, this is my final stars and moon spread. All right, so on the next page, I'm going to do a goals section. And since I already have a little bit of like bleed through from all the stars and moons that I did on the other side, I'm just gonna use that as my backdrop and put this black piece of paper um, to put all of my goals on. And for this page, I'm honestly putting very minimal effort into it because I know from past experience I do not usually go back and look at this page at all, but I like to have it there just to see like what my goals were for each year, um, but sometimes I don't even put anything at all. Like last year, I didn't even remember to uh, fill out that section. It happens, um, but I'm just going to put it here anyway, just in case I want to use it. And I'm just using some of my stickers that I came out with in December. I've been loving using all of my new stickers from that collection, so um, I thought I'd use them for this page, and that's pretty much it. And I'm going to save the other page for something else. I'm not really sure what yet. I haven't decided, so I'm just going to leave it blank. All right, so now on to my final spread, and this is one that I have not done before. Um, it is a idea that I found off of a couple of different people that I follow on Instagram. I think a lot of people probably do this, but I saw it in Amanda Reachley's um, bullet journal, and I think she called it like a year in Polaroids or something like that, but I kind of want to do something similar, but use the floral designs that I did in my important dates. Um, uh, spread so I'm gonna do those same colors and the same pattern and I'm gonna put them all around the Polaroids and let me tell you this process was very tedious um, I honestly wanted to stop at one point because my like arm was spazzing out you would think something like this would be easy to do but my arm was like so tired after doing all these spreads back to back that this last page was honestly just like not even me trying anymore, but I still think it turned out looking pretty good. Um, it just definitely wasn't as uh, good looking as my past spread. So now I'm going to take out my Fujifilm Instax Share smartphone printer and it's this cute little printer. I think I've used it once before in a video, but I always forget that I have it. And so I really wanted to use it this time because I didn't have any Polaroids for the month of January. I don't think I ever um, used my camera or my Polaroid camera that month, so I wanted to print a couple out as options to place in my January spot. And I think it's so handy and it, like the quality of it turns out so nicely, so I'm going to start using it a lot more. But I'm actually going to use this photo instead as my first picture for January because it is the first picture that my boyfriend and I took in our new apartment that we moved into recently and it is our first ever time living together so uh, we just took this picture by the fireplace and I just love it. I think it's the perfect photo to use for my January spread. So I'm going to put my little printer away and I'm going to paste it into my journal. And then at the bottom of each little Polaroid, I'll just write the month and yeah, I think it's going to look so good all filled up at the end of the year. I can't wait to see it once it's all done and everything. But yeah, this is my final Polaroid spread. And that was the final pages I set up for my 2020 bullet journal. 
I hope it gave you guys some inspiration for your journal and gives you something new to try in the new year. And I want to finish this video off by talking about Squarespace. One of my big goals for 2020 was making my own website and Squarespace gives a powerful and beautiful online platform to do exactly that. So I kind of wanted to show you guys me starting out my first website and eventually I'm going to have my shop on here and they have awesome features that allow you to link all your social media accounts, have people be able to subscribe to your mailing list. I'm just super excited to have everything in one place and make it my own. But if you guys want to make your own website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Jenny journals to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the next video that I'll be doing is setting up my monthly spreads. So um, subscribe if you guys want to see that and I'll see you in the next one.